It's an honor to welcome you again to the Kanguka Broadcast. My name is Chris Ndikumana. Today is Tuesday and I would like to encourage the listeners who are tired. Some of you have grown weary, you are very discouraged. Maybe you used to pray fervently, but now you stopped praying. Many of you listening to me have prayed, but you got discouraged. You fasted and prayed, but nothing has changed, and at some point you gave up. You tried all you could in your own strength, all you could in your own intelligence, all you could in your own money, but it didn't work and you quit. Maybe you are at a point where you convinced that no matter what you do, nothing can change. You've tried, but you failed. Some have even left the faith. You turned your back on God. I want to encourage you and tell you that you should shouldn't let your problem separate you from I am. Your hardship shouldn't stop you from praying. If you turn your back on God and stop praying, you can't walk in the truth anymore and you no longer have life in you. That's because life is in God. Let me encourage you. The word of God says that I am gives strength to those who are weak. I want to talk to those who are feeling weak. If you are currently standing strong, this message isn't for you. It's for those who are weak. I want every listener who's feeling weak to know that I am gives strength to those who are weak. I'm not making this up. It's written in the word of God in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29. It says that God gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. You might be discouraged and ready to give up, but he can increase your strength so you can continue your journey to heaven. Let me tell you that no one can remain on this journey on their own strength. No one can continue this journey without I am. So don't be discouraged. Don't give up. I want to encourage you to have faith again. Some ladies that are listening to me have waited for a child for a long time. You have prayed, you have waited, but you got discouraged and you gave up. Let me tell you that no matter how old you are, you need to believe that I am is able to do what's impossible to men. I will say it again. I am is able to do what seems impossible to men. He can do what doctors say is impossible. Don't listen to the discouraging words people say to you. Don't say Set your eyes on your physical limitations, but believe that I am is able to do what men can't do. If he was able to split the Red Sea in two and provide a dry passage for more than a million people, he can use the same power in your situation because his power is still at work today. The healing reports that you hear about are the result of his power. His power is still the same. It doesn't weaken with time, but his power is at work when there is faith. If you've lost faith and you keep complaining, you need to change your attitude. Change the words that are coming out your mouth. Go back to spending time with I am in prayer. If you no longer rise up early in the morning, I urge you to do it again. Set an alarm in your phone, wake up and go before God in the morning. If you don't know what to say, you can just sing to him. You can tell him that you're putting your trust in him, that you believe that he can still make a way for you. Maybe you a lady who wants to be married. Many years have passed by, but no one has shown interest in you. Let me tell you that it's I am who created the earth and everything in it. He created all men and the women who are on this earth. Everything that exists was created by him. He gave life to every living being and they are all in his mighty hand. His power is limitless. I don't have enough words to describe it. That's why we shouldn't despair when our hope is in God who created heaven and earth. I want to encourage every person who's tired and weak. I urge you to keep meditating today on Isaiah 40 verse 29. Our hope is only in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am on the knees to speak one word to change your situation. I hope that the words I've shared with you have awakened you. If you are discouraged, if you had given up, you need to rise up again. I am is still on the throne and he's more than able. We 
are now in the teaching portion of the broadcast and we're still studying the book of Acts. Yesterday we were looking at chapter 17. I had asked you to read the entire chapter and chapter 18 as well. So let's pick up from where we left off yesterday. I was talking about Paul in Athens. You can read from verse 16 to verse 34 how he was trying to share the gospel with the Greek people. It was very hard because the Greek people relied heavily on their own intelligence. Talking to them about Jesus, about the resurrection from the dead, telling them that Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. All this made Paul look like a fool to them and they even mocked him. You can see in verse 32 that he was mocked. He was despised. They thought he didn't make any sense and they told him to come back another day. That's because the Greeks relied on their own intelligence and reason more than anything else. Today there are many people who are like these Greeks. In every country there are Christians or unbelievers that still rely on their own intelligence and understanding. When you talk about God or about Jesus, when you tell them that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, that he rose from the dead, they have a hard time understanding all that because they rely on their own understanding and they want to see physical evidence. Jesus said that he came so that those who don't see may see and that those who see may be made blind. He was talking about humble people who have faith in what they don't see. Remember what he told Thomas. He said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You don't need physical evidence in order to believe. But that was the issue with those Greeks. Verse 16 says that Paul saw that the city was full of idols. That's because the Greeks needed to pray to the gods they can see. They couldn't understand the concept of an invisible God. You can see in verse 18 that there were many philosophers. Many of you probably already heard about many famous Greek philosophers who were experts in reasoning. So these philosophers gave Paul an opportunity to speak to them and they listened to him. He attempted to convince them and they carefully listened to him until he spoke about the resurrection of the dead. That was a stumbling block to the Greek philosophers. It was against their logic and Paul immediately lost their attention. That's why verse 32 says that when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. They stopped listening to him because they thought it was nonsense. We see the same reaction today when we talk about salvation. Many people will tell you that it's nonsense, that it defies logic. That's because they want concrete evidence evidence. They want scientific evidence. But faith isn't based on human logic. It's based on the revelation from the Holy Spirit to your spirit that makes you understand that you were created by God and that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Now I'd like to say something about verse 30. It's a verse that I love very much. It says that God overlooked these times of ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. This is a very important verse. If you're not saved, if if you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pay attention to this verse. What are the times of ignorance mentioned here? It's when you're living in sin, when you do whatever pleases you, when you don't pray as you should, or when you don't pray the true God, or when you don't even believe in God. That's what the Bible calls the times of ignorance. All the sins that you committed in the past, like sexual immorality, lying, stealing, killing, they are all forgiven when you go on your knees and you repent. God erases them and it's as if you never committed them. That's why the verse says that God commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is crucial. You can say that you know and love God if you're still living a life of sin without repentance. Every person needs to repent and to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Verse 31 says that God has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man who he has ordained. So, who is this this man they are talking here is Jesus Christ. He has been ordained to be the judge of the world. Verse 31 goes on to say that God has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Jesus was raised from the dead and he will judge this world. The Greek couldn't understand this. It was nonsense to them. That's why they stopped listening to Paul and began to mock him. Tomorrow I will start chapter 18. Please read it ahead of time. There are many truths we can learn from that chapter that apply to our lives today and that apply especially to the lives of servants of God. May I am bless you. Have a great day.
If you want to talk to a man of God or you need a particular prayer, you can call us on plus 256 78 13 337.